Novak. This is VOA News from Washington. I'm Jeff Custer. A powerful 7.8 magnitude earthquake rocked parts of Turkey and Syria early Monday, toppling hundreds of buildings and killing more than 2,300 people in both countries, with hundreds more believed to be trapped under the rubble. The epicenter of the pre-dawn earthquake was near the Turkey-Syria border, and it was followed by a separate magnitude 7.5 earthquake about 100 kilometers north in the early afternoon. The deadly earthquake hit hard in areas that houses millions of Syrians already displaced by war. Associated Press correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. In Syria's Idlib province, the last remaining rebel-held stronghold, many of the displaced live in dire conditions in makeshift camps. In both government and opposition control areas of northern Syria, buildings weakened by years of bombings were particularly vulnerable to this new shock. Carsten Hansen, director for the Middle East at the Norwegian Refugee Council, said in a statement that the earthquake will worsen the suffering of Syrians already struggling with a severe humanitarian crisis. I'm Charles de Ledesma. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan declared seven days of national mourning for the nation where more than a thousand people died and urged flies, flags to fly at half-mast until February 12th. You'll find expanded coverage of our world news and events at voanews.com 24 hours a day. This is VOA News. At U.N. headquarters in New York, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres Monday spoke about, pre presented his priorities for the year ahead. In a speech to the 193-member U.N. General Assembly, the, the U.N. chief cited the war in Ukraine, climate change, and poverty as the top three challenges facing the world body. On the subject of pottery, poverty, Guterres said the developing world is currently being left out. Something is fundamentally wrong with our economic and financial system. The global financial architecture is at the heart of the problem. It should be the means through which globalization benefits all, yet it is failing. The global financial architecture does not need a simple evolution. It needs a radical transformation. The UN Secretary General called for a new commitment to, to place the needs of developing countries at the center of every decision and mechanism of the global financial system. The U.S. National Football League Championship game, also known as the Super Bowl, is set for Sunday, with the Kansas City Chiefs facing the Philadelphia Eagles. But for many, the television ads that run between the plays and the field are as much of an attraction as the game itself. Associated Press correspondent Jennifer King reports on what people can expect to see when there's a break in the action. The Super Bowl is the big game for advertising with more than 100 million viewers each year. Mark Evans with ad sales for Fox Sports says ad space for the big game has sold out. 30-second spots went for 6 to $7 million each. Anheuser-Busch remains the biggest advertiser with three minutes of airtime but gave up an exclusive deal. So there will be ads from other brands including Heineken and Molson Coors. Other big categories include snack chips, candy, movie studios, and tech companies like Squarespace that drafted Adam Driver. Making websites. Streaming service Netflix and automaker GM teamed up for a zombie-themed ad starring Will Ferrell. You have a great one, all right? <sighs> Stupid zombie. The He Gets Us media campaign promoting Jesus claimed two spots and spent about $20 million. Evans says there won't be a repeat of what some viewers dubbed the Crypto Bowl last year due to the implosion of the cryptocurrency market. I'm Jennifer King. Iran-based singer Shervin Hajapur's Grammy Award for a song he produced last year in honor of Iran's peaceful protest movement against Islamist rule has prompted an outpouring of positive reactions from Iranian social media users. U.S. First Lady Jill Biden announced Hajapur's win of the U.S. Recording Academy's first-ever Song for Social Change Special Merit Award at Sunday's annual ceremony in Los Angeles. Hajapur produced the award-winning song Barai in September with lyrics drawn from social media posts in which other Iranians stated what they were protesting for and because of. The song, which is posted on his Instagram account, became an instant hit and a protest anthem garnering 40 million views in its first 48 hours. 
I'm Jeff Custer. Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This is VOA News in Washington. I'm Jeff Custer. Rescuers are racing to find survivors in the rubble of thousands of buildings brought down by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake and multiple aftershocks that struck eastern Turkey and neighboring Syria yesterday. Officials now say the quake has killed at least 6,200 people, and that total is expected to rise. Associated Press correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. In the eastern Turkey town of Nadagi, grief-stricken residents pass by a truck where dead bodies are. Ali Silo has retrieved the bodies of four Syrians who had lived there, including two of his relatives from the rubble of their collapsed homes. Silo says we were able to escape, thank God nothing happened to us. He and other residents had worked to lift the debris and recover the bodies on their own. Nearby, the AP found Nilifer Sarigoz waiting for help to retrieve the remains of her sister and her children. She says if they, the rescuers, had arrived yesterday, Monday, they would have been saved. I'm Charles Diladesma. Officials in Ukraine say Russian shelling has damaged a hospital and apartment buildings ahead of what officials in Kyiv say is a brewing Russian offensive planned to coincide with the anniversary of its invasion last year. Authorities say, authorities say Tuesday that shelling in the northeastern town of Avansk caused multiple fires, including at its two-story municipal hospital. Vavansk is in the Kharkiv region, which was occupied by Russia after its full-scale invasion began February 24th and subsequently retaken by Ukraine during a late summer counteroffensive. The anticipated Russian push may seek to recapture territory Moscow lost in that counteroffensive, but military analysts expressed skepticism about the potential impact of a Russian assault. This is VOA News. Later Tuesday, U.S. President Joe Biden will deliver his first State of the Union address to a divided Congress since he took office. Associated Press correspondent Donna Water has this preview. The president is expected to offer a reassuring assessment of the nation's condition before a politically divided Congress. On the eve of the president's address, GOP House Speaker Kevin McCarthy challenged Biden to come to the negotiating table with House Republicans to cut spending as part of a deal to raise the debt ceiling. President Biden wants Congress to raise the debt limit yet again without a single sensible change to how government spends your hard-earned money. Biden has insisted that he won't negotiate on meeting the country's debt obligations. And while COVID-19 has eased at home, Biden is expected to turn his sights to the deadly opioid epidemic, mental health, gun violence, and police abuses. The parents of the Memphis man recently beaten to death by police officers are expected to be in the audience. Donna Water, Washington. A Chinese foreign ministry spokeswoman said Tuesday the suspected Chinese spy balloon shot down by a U.S. fighter jet belongs to China and not the United States. At a news briefing, Chinese foreign ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning, when asked if China wanted the balloon's instruments to be returned, said the balloon is not American, adding that Beijing will continue to defend its legitimate rights and interests. The balloon incident prompted U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to postpone a planned trip to China this, scheduled for this week, a trip intended to mend relations between the two powers. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said Monday that meeting could still be held. Uh, I suspect there will be opportunities going forward uh, for the secretary to engage in that face-to-face -face diplomacy. After all, we didn't cancel this meeting. We postponed it. Uh, we postponed it until such a time. Uh, where it would be appropriate for the secretary to travel to Beijing uh, to have the type of meeting that we hope to have, a meeting that could help to establish a floor uh, under the relationship and a meeting where we could discuss everything that's of interest to us and many issues that are of interest to the rest of the world as well. More than a dozen people have been killed by a series of landslides in southern Peru. Authorities say several others were injured or missing amid the disaster, which was triggered by several days of heavy rains in the region. Several villages were buried under tons of mud and rocks, with the hardest-hit area being the Nicholas Valcarcel municipality in Kamana province. The disaster is the latest crisis to hit Peru, which has been plagued by massive protests since the ouster of President Pedro Castillo back in December. Dozens of people have died, and hundreds have been wounded in the unrest. For pictures, videos, stories, and more, follow The Voice of America on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. From Washington, I'm Jeff Custer. This is VOA News.
And I'm Dan Novak. This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Wednesday said the loss of life in the earthquake in Turkey and Syria that has killed over 11,500 people has been truly staggering and shocking. So far, we have deployed more than 150 search and rescue personnel to Turkey. We have U.S. helicopters that are helping to reach areas that would otherwise be difficult to access. Blinken also said Washington will have more to say in days ahead about how the United States will continue to support the Turkish and Syrian people as they recover from the devastation. The Syrian rebel-controlled enclave of Idlib on the Turkish border is reeling from Monday's two deadly earthquakes. The region has already been devastated by years of civil war, and aid agencies now say the need for international assistance is urgent. For VOA, Dorian Jones reports from Istanbul. Monday's two deadly earthquakes devastated the Syrian rebel-controlled Idlib province on Turkey's border. But out of the destruction, miraculous stories of survival, like Abu Yazam Mada. <laughs> Mada and his family were rescued by the Civil Defense Force, commonly known as the White Helmets. Abmadar's son Habib died. The sheer scale of the destruction is pushing the White Helmets to the limit as they contend with freezing winter conditions. Doreen Jones of VOA News, Istanbul. Police in Canada say a city bus drove into a daycare north of Montreal, leaving two children dead and six injured. A police spokesperson says the 51-year-old bus driver was arrested and charged with careless driving and homicide after the Wednesday morning crash. An eyewitness says that immediately after the crash, the driver stepped out of the bus, ripped off his clothes, and started screaming. This is VOA News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited Britain on Wednesday to drum up aid, winning a pledge to train Ukrainian pilots on advanced NATO fighter jets, a big symbolic step up in Western military support against Russia's invasion. Two years ago, I thanked you for delicious English tea. And I will be leaving the Parliament today, thanking all of you in advance for powerful English planes. It was just his second trip abroad since Russian forces swept into Ukraine on February 24th last year. Zelensky met Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and thanked Britain for, quote, marching with us towards the most important victory of our lifetime. The IOC is stepping up efforts to explain its position on trying to help Russian athletes qualify for next year's Paris Olympics amid a backlash from Ukraine and its allies. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. The Olympic body has responded to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's invitation for his IOC counterpart, Thomas Bach, to return and see the ruined city of Bakhmut. Currently, there are no plans for another visit to Ukraine, the IOC says, noting that Bach had visited Kiev last July and had since spoken with Zelensky in telephone calls. The IOC has once more cited the opinion of two UN human rights experts. They should compete under a neutral flag. I'm Charles de Ledesma. Eight people were killed and 28 wounded when protesters in East Congo's North Kivu province blocked and then set up a convoy, uh, set upon a convoy of United Nations peacekeepers on Tuesday, resulting in clashes the provincial government said on Wednesday. Anti-UN sediment has risen since a rebel group known as the M23 staged a violent offensive last year that has displaced hundreds of thousands and caused dozens of deaths in an already volatile part of the country. Uprooted citizens accused the UN peacekeeping mission and a regional force set up last year of failing to protect them. Their anger has spurred protests in and around the provincial capital, Goma, some of which have turned deadly. A convoy returning to Goma with supplies was attacked on Tuesday evening as it was making its way through a camp that houses hundreds of displaced families outside the city, the mission said in a statement. Find more on our website, voanews.com. I'm Joe Ramsey. I'm Dan Novak.
This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. Rescue crews in Turkey and Syria raced against time Thursday to find survivors buried in the rubble of buildings toppled by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake on Monday that has killed more than 20,000 people. The country's disaster management agency said Thursday that about 110,000 people and 5,500 vehicles are working on rescue efforts. Speaking to reporters in Geneva, U.N. Special Envoy for Syria, Gare Peterson, said Thursday that he's been assured help can get through to whomever needs it. I've been discussing this in particular with representatives from the United States and from the European Union. And they assure me that they will do whatever they can to make sure that there are no impediments to assistance coming to Syria to help in this operation. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says his country has intercepted plans by Russian secret services to destroy Moldova. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma. Speaking to EU leaders in Brussels, Zelensky says he'd recently informed Moldovan President Maya Sandu of the plan by Russian intelligence of the destruction of Moldova. Zelensky said the documents showed who, when and how the plan would break the democracy of Moldova and establish control over the country. He added the plan was very similar to the one devised by Russia to take over Ukraine. Russian Foreign Secretary Sergei Lavrov charged last week that the West was considering turning Moldova into another Ukraine. I'm Charles de Ledesma. The Shenzhou 15 astronauts on board the orbiting Chinese Tiangong space station completed their first spacewalk early Friday morning Beijing time. This, according to the China Manned Space Agency, it lasted about seven hours and was the first conducted after the completion of the Chinese space station. This is VOA News. Congress is addressing the Chinese spy balloon with the House voting unanimously to condemn China's surveillance program as a brazen violation of U.S. sovereignty. AP correspondent Jackie Quinn. The yeas are 419, the nays are zero. And members of Congress received classified briefings about China's aerial spy program. Nobody wants spy balloons flying over whatever state it is, right? And we need to do more to address it. Alaska Republican Senator Dan Sullivan thinks the balloon should have been shot down before it flew over his state. And what if it had been a missile? Montana Senator Steve Daines concerned about what information the device might have picked up over his state. Hovered over the most powerful weapons known to mankind, which are called intercontinental ballistic missiles. Democrat Richard Blumenthal is also calling for a crackdown on China's spying. Part of a effort to do not only surveillance but disruption. I'm Jackie Quinn. A shortage of pilots is limiting the number of flights that airlines can operate, causing delays and cancellations. APZ Donahue has more. Several major airlines are now partnering with flight schools or starting their own pilot training programs. Ashley Montano had never flown until last summer. With United and their push to uh, bring in more women and people of color and diversify uh, the flight deck. It was really a perfect opportunity. She hopes in a few years she'll be flying airline jets. Dana Donati with United Aviate Academy says the big need is for pilots at regional carriers. What we're doing is trying to train our students, get them to 1,500 hours in the safest, most efficient way so they can fill those slots at the, reg- at the regional airlines. Reaching 1,500 hours of flight time cost between $70,000 and $100,000. The shortage is giving pilot unions leverage in contract negotiations, which are expected to increase include hefty pay raises. I'm Ed Donahue. Brazil's leftist president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, arrived in Washington Thursday in a visit that will focus on support for Brazilian democracy and shared environmental commitments. Lula comes at the invitation of U.S. President Joe Biden. He will visit Biden on Friday afternoon after meeting with U.S. lawmakers in the morning. Relations between the United States and Brazil had been lukewarm under Lula's far-right predecessor, Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro was an ally of Republican former U.S. President President Donald Trump. Afghans wanting to access news online, including via some of VOA's websites, are being met with blank screens and error messages. For at least two weeks, people in several provinces have reported problems when trying to access websites via their cell phones when using the networks of some privately owned telecom workers in Afghanistan. I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.